and welcome to Speech Communication 4397, Effective Meeting Management. I'm Dr. Martha Hahn. This is class number nine. Uh, if you're a channel surfer, you're in for an extra treat this evening. I have our afternoon or whenever you videotape this and are watching it. Mm -hmm. uh, as advertised on the syllabus, we do have guests here uh, for this class. This is Stephanie Mulet, who is in the catering sales department for the Weston Hotels. And this is Mary Monaco, who is a national sales director for the Weston Hotels. Uh, you'll recall that last week we had uh, a guest from the Hyatt here, Jane Jordan, who talked with us. Uh, Mary is sort of Jane's counterpart. They compete with each other, mm -hmm. so uh, and they know it, and they're friendly, and they get along anyway, I think. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah. Uh, so as you reflect on uh, some of the things that Jane told you, you may have questions that you wish to raise or address uh, to Mary. Just, you know, different hotel properties do some things differently. They do many things the same, and you just might want to keep those observations uh, in mind as you're doing this. Uh, Charles, if we can get a shot of the goodies that are up here. We, those that are in the studio audience are in for some extra treats uh, today. Thank you, Charles. <laughs> we won't starve them to death. Uh, those of you who are at home may just have to pause your VCR and go raid the refrigerator. We're sorry. There should be some perseverance, though, for uh, those who have come through the heat and the muck uh, to make it in here. But we are going to be t focusing especially on catering services and the advantages that and, and the information that you need in order to work with the catering department when you're uh, doing your meeting planning. But we're going to start by uh, going to Mary, and she's going to talk to us some things about sales from her point of view. So, Mary, you. you're uh, on. Actually, Stephanie's going to start. Oh, you decide okay. Stephanie's yeah. going to start. <laughs> okay. Go back to Mary. Um, hello. Thanks for inviting us from the Weston Hotels. As she said, I'm a catering slash convention services manager with the Weston. This is Mary Monaco. She's our national sales manager at the hotel. And we're going to talk to you a little bit today about the sales process and the communication to ensure a successful convention or event that you possibly will plan in the future. And then I will take you on room setups and food functions. But first things first, go Cougs, and let's beat Kansas this weekend. I'm a graduate of the University of Houston. I have a degree in speech communications. Yay! And <laughs> I have a job. I work in the hotel industry, and I have been with the Weston since 1993. With the Weston Hotels, I have worked with various types of groups, anything from political groups for 600 to conventions for 200, luncheons for 1,000, and weddings for 100. And at the Weston Hotel and the Weston Galleria in Weston Oaks, there's two towers at our property, we have 32 meeting rooms, 27,635 square feet of exhibition center space for approximately 150 booths, 12,408 square feet in our ballroom that'll seat 1,000 people for a theater style or general session and 1,000 for dinner. Two junior ballrooms, 891 sleeping rooms, 51 parlor suites, and three hospitality suites for your VIPs. Possibly you'll want to put your conventioneers in one of our VIP suites. And as you can see, we're very busy, Mary and I, at the Westin. We have a multitude of meeting space and sleeping rooms, and we can accommodate just about every type of event that you're planning. I'd now like to introduce Mary Monaco. She, again, is our national sales manager. She is responsible for booking conventions for national corporations and associations within the Chicago, New York, Midwest, and Northeast regions of the United States. Her background includes 11 years in the hotel industry. She was a sales manager for about four and a half years with a major hotel chain, and she's been with the Westin for about six and a half years. She graduated from the Western Illinois University. She will be speaking to you about the sales process, which will ultimately lead to a convention contract, and she will stress the importance of effective communication between the meeting planner and the hotel. And then I will take you through the next phase after the contract has been signed, and this again will include the room setups. But first we want to take you on what we call in the hotel industry a site inspection of our hotel. This is something that will be done during the initial stages prior to the contract, and it's a way that you can see the hotel up close. So if you could run the videotape for us for a few minutes.
It's a short video clip of our hotel. Well, this is our hotels. general manager. Won't you take a moment and join me on a brief tour of our fine hotels? First, let's look at each of our four outstanding restaurants. Delmonico's, an American grill with an Italian flair, with such signature items as cedar planked <laughs> salmon, mesquite smoked prime rib, and fabulous pasta dishes. Delmonico's also features live entertainment for diners and those visiting Lorenzo's Lounge, located adjacent to Delmonico's. Cafe Plaza, where we feature fresh omelets, homemade soups, salads, and daily specials for the health conscious. Also available at Cafe Plaza are over 30 different types of coffees and coffee beverages. Shucker Sports Bar, specializing in fresh Gulf Coast seafood, sandwiches and burgers in a sports atmosphere. Major sporting events are televised here on the Galleria's only widescreen television. Zucchini's Restaurant, where farm fresh breakfast and delectable lunch and dinner specials are served in a market style atmosphere. And when night falls, guests can head to the roof for live entertainment while enjoying the breathtaking view 21 floors above the city. The Weston Galleria and Weston Oaks Hotels feature 30 meeting and banquet rooms totaling 75,000 square feet of flexible function space. For all your business needs, our business center offers a wide variety of services. The business center is located on the lobby level of the Weston Galleria Hotel. A new feature exclusive to Weston Hotels and Resorts is Service Express. For any hotel service you require, one call does it all. For those guests with leisure time on their hands, the hotels feature exercise facilities, a jogging track, two swimming pools, and a tennis court. Thank you for selecting the Weston Galleria and Weston Oaks as your home away from home while here in Houston. We hope you had a pleasant stay and we look forward to welcoming you back often. Good morning. As Stephanie said, my name is Mary Monaco and I'm National Sales Manager at the Weston Hotels. I am responsible for booking meetings and conventions at the hotel. It's a very exciting job it, and the convention business is very important to the city of Houston. You may have recently, <clears throat> in Houston, the Houston Chronicle, read the article about the potential for a downtown convention hotel. Conventions can bring so much additional money to, this, to a city. When you have international visitors, it promotes the city for potential business down the road, but it also brings in new dollars that uh, it r definitely benefits the city, whether it's through the hotels, nearby restaurants, airlines, taxi cabs, everyone benefits from the convention business. At our hotel, we pursue um, group business and meetings business because it is a way to sell a large number of rooms at one time. We have 891 rooms at the Weston Hotels, so it takes obviously less time to <coughs> sell 891 rooms to one group than to sell them individually. There are several ways that we pursue business at our hotels. One of them is through the Greater Houston Convention and Visitors Bureau. And I understand that later on down the road, you will hear from a representative of the Convention Bureau. The Bureau is a, an arm of the Chamber of Commerce here in Houston. And their focus is to promote our city to convention business, to tourism officials, to tourism um, guests to filmmakers to promote Houston as a site for possibly a next movie. So there are many different areas which the Convention Bureau promotes our city. They, uh, uh, attendees, um, employees of the Convention Bureau attend a lot of national trade shows and convention conventions whereby they meet with meeting planners and try to convince them to bring their meeting to Houston. We compete a lot on a national level with cities such as Los Angeles, Chicago, Las Vegas, New Orleans, New York, and Atlanta. But also within the state, we compete with cities such as Dallas, 
San Antonio Corpus Christi. So to be able to persuade someone to come to Texas doesn't finish the job. We still have to persuade them to come to Houston. When these um, employees of the Convention Bureau reach someone who is interested in Houston, they send out what is called a lead. A lead is information on the particular meeting or convention, and it is sent to all of the Convention Bureau member hotels. We will s therefore um, contact the client and talk to them by phone or send them a proposal trying to get their interest in our particular property. Another way that we pursue business is through Weston's sales offices. We have sales offices in many cities throughout the world and many throughout the United States, such as Chicago, New York, Washington, D.C., Los Angeles. Sales managers at these particular sales offices are called national account directors. They are responsible for working with the larger corporations and associations, such as American Hospital Association, American Dental Association, Exxon Oil Corporation. Rather than having 61 individual properties contact one meeting planner or several meeting planners at one time, this one person is the main contact on behalf of Weston. The meeting planner might call the national account director um, to book a meeting, for instance, in the south. So that person would then contact all of the Weston hotels that would meet the requirements in the south. They basically promote all Westons. Another way that we pursue business is through solicitation calls. This is what is typically understood as a cold call. It is not the most comfortable way of, of selling. It is basically working through anything, a trade, trade listing, an association membership listing, even the yellow pages, whereby you would call an organization to ask for the name of the person who plans meetings for the company. If you're lucky enough to get to that person, whether the person's either out of the office or you get their voicemail immediately, but uh, if you are lucky enough to get to that person, hopefully they will have enough time or take the time to answer questions for you about the meetings that they plan and the potential for your hotel. Another way that we pursue business is through, <coughs> excuse me, what we call inquiry calls. That is, uh, a process where someone would just call a hotel that they may have read about. Maybe they saw an ad on TV or an ad in USA Today about Weston Hotels and Resorts and just found out that they need to book a meeting in Houston. They may call the hotel and not know particularly who they need to talk to. And our receptionist has a very big responsibility to make sure that they get that person to the right sales manager who handles the specific territory. When a person calls our hotel to ask for information, we send them one of our convention planner kits. <clears throat> In each of these kits, we try to, again, promote the city of Houston as well as our hotel. So in each kit promoting the city, we have information on Gulf Greyhound Park, Space Center Houston, Sam Houston Race Park. Also, uh, Houston Convention and Visitors Guide, which is basically a compilation of all the area hotels, restaurants, attractions, theme parks, etc. Also in our kit is what we call a rack brochure, which is a nice, short, quick print type of brochure on the hotel just gives you the basics. Also, a basic listing or information sheet on the hotel as far as number of sleeping rooms we have, suites, meeting space, outside activities, everything that the hotel has to offer. But this brochure really sums it up, and I believe you all have this in, in your kits. It's what we call our meeting planner's guide. And we'll have more of those kits at our face-to-face -face meeting. Great. For viewers. 
The guide basically sums up and displays all of the hotel meeting space and meeting room capacities. And then also on the back, of, again, a nice summary of the hotel services. And always, our loyalty to Weston on the back, it shows information on other Weston hotels and resorts. <clears throat> The nice thing about this industry is that meeting planning has finally become recognized as a profession. It used to be considered a fluff type of position where anybody could be considered a meeting planner. Someone might ask the receptionist or an assistant or secretary in a department to go ahead and handle responsibilities. It was assumed that anyone could plan a meeting, but um, and and that no special skills or education was required. And thank heaven that we've we've come a long way. Um, meeting planners are the professionals that are in a pr profession that is, really stands alone. Sometimes they are employed by a marketing department a special events department, or again, they might be an assistant within a company or association. There are, are a couple of ways to obtain a position as a meeting planner, and I understand that a lot of you are still trying to determine what you want to be when you get out of school. When you grow <coughs> up. <laughs> when you grow up. So let me give you a few pointers. Number one would be to learn the hotel side. A meeting planner obviously would not work in a hotel directly, but a hotel is your partner. And until you realize how a hotel operates, how a hotel profits, you cannot understand how to work with a hotel. There are a lot of positions within the hotel business where you can gain a better understanding of the overall operation. Uh, front, desk, front desk agent, concierge, Catering assistant. Catering, catering assistant, catering. yes. We have many uh, sales assistants, s such as Stephanie, who has moved up and been promoted to sales manager, catering sales manager. So there are a lot of different ways to do that. In a hotel, you can also work in a different restaurant or nightclub. You can work in service express, housekeeping, engineering. So again, there are a lot of different departments. And once you under get, gain a better knowledge, that will help you determine whether or not you want to stay on the hotel side or maybe you know enough about the hotel where you can move over to the other side as a meeting planner. <clears throat> Another way to obtain a position might be to contact trade organizations and join them. There are three main um, associations which are key to this industry. PCMA which is the Professional Convention Management Association, MPI, which is Meeting Professionals International, and ASAE, which is the American Society of Association Executives. All of these associations are, represent the meetings industry. Members can include meeting planners from corporations or associations, Hotel sales managers, hotel catering managers, representatives from convention bureaus, what representatives from national sales offices such as Weston. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there are, are opportunities through going to these conventions that these associations do put on that can ultimately help you gain a position in the industry. Number one, it's a great way to network. Uh, attending these meetings knowing that people from Weston, Hyatt, Marriott, Sheraton might be attending is obviously a, a, a good in. Also knowing that meeting planners with large associations, such as American Hospital Association, American Dental Association, it's a great way to network with the, with the top dogs. But also, these associations conduct their annual meetings, whereby you gain incredible education in educational opportunities. They have forums, for instance, of different meeting planners who may get together and discuss 
a particular disaster which may have happened at their meeting and how they handled it. One of the most interesting sessions I've ever attended was um, a, a group of meeting planners that tried to top each other off and say, you think that was a disaster, wait till you hear mine. My meeting was the day of the earthquake in San Francisco. Can you imagine trying to coordinate 2,000 people flying into the city, staying in one property, and then a, an earthquake happens? So they gain knowledge from each other, and it's a, it's a great way to get that education, but also network and get a job. Another way to obtain a uh, position would be to secure an entry-level position with a meeting planner. Um, it might be someone who, yes? I don't, want, I don't want mean to interrupt you in midstream. When you say an entry-level position uh -huh. with a meeting planner, if said meeting planner is employed with a major hotel, then you go through the, what do they call it now, no longer personal, human resources. Mm -hmm. You go through them. But how do you get yeah. to that meeting planner that you want? Because a lot of people in here may just take you up on your offer. But when you go through human resources, and you say, well, what positions are you interested in? They may have matched and pairs of what's available. So mm -hmm. how do you break that log jam, mm -hmm. which is the bottleneck that they speak yeah. of in effective communication Absolutely. from the lower levels to get to where you're at? I could see as far getting as far as her, but let's just say she's the type of person who likes to hoard all the good information. How do I get to you? Absolutely. But based on what you just said. Very good question. Thank you. Well, if you know that uh, someone is, if there is a meeting planner that you want to get to, chances are that planner is probably a member of PCMA or MPI or one of these large trade associations. You can come face to face with that person at those meetings. Or th let me also continue too. There are local chapters of PCMA and Houston area meeting professionals international too, where it's small groups of 20 people and um, the meeting planner for MD Anderson Hospital, for instance, is on the board. So if you network and volunteer to become involved, hey, I'll, I'll um, help with the annual fundraiser. You work with these people. You get to know them. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Mary. Get to know them on a first-hand basis. Hey, Mary, next time I see you, you know, I want to talk to you about a, a, a couple of things that I'm looking for as far as a position. When we talk entry level, it could potentially be someone's assistant or secretary or receptionist. And kind of to tag on to that, mm -hmm. uh, oh, then what would happen is that if I know you or Stephanie or whomever and she knows I want to work with her, she would call Human Resources and say, I'm sending somebody in to do the paperwork. As soon as that paperwork's completed, send them on up to my office. Absolutely. So that, that's how the networking goes full circle. Absolutely. And that happens all the time. All the time. A lot of phone calls I, uh, I receive resumes, and although I'm not the director of sales, I receive resumes all the time from people that I may meet through the industry. If I don't have something for them, I may call them and say, tell them that, but I happen to know that someone at the Hyatt, that the, a position is open at the Hyatt, let me call a friend of mine over there and fax them your resume. So it's all people you know. So in essence, it comes down to life's real theory. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Absolutely. So assuming this scenario, which you will never find in a textbook, I wanted that position and you got a dozen roses, tell me you wouldn't interview me. I'm sorry, I don't understand. If I sent you a dozen red roses with a card attached, I'm I getting would. interviewed. You bet I would. Two dozen, you have the job. No. <laughs> <laughs> but you better, <laughs> but you better be Absolutely. able to do the job when you get there mm -hmm. with or the you won't get past the interview. Uh -huh. Next question. As far as your uh, degrees go, what kind of mm -hmm. degrees do you basically look for when you look when you want to be a meeting planner? What kind of background experience? Speech communication. Speech communication <laughs> right here. It's everything we do every uh, every day. But how so about exactly. you, Mary? What what kind of My uh, degree is in hotel specialty through Western Illinois University, and actually at that point I really wanted to specialize in um, therapeutic recreation for the disabled, but my um, not very good with the medical area, more on the hospitality side. So that's, but we have people at the hotel who have every type of degree. It doesn't matter. I think that the hospitality industry, because it has so many different areas to it, the basic need that you have to have is, is the hosp 
hospitality. It's the hospitality industry. If you can communicate well with people, if you can understand when someone is standing in front of you that they're upset because someone knocked on their door at 2 in the morning and it was a hotel engineer, that you can empathize with them and communicate to them how you're going to take care of them, that you're going to make them walk away not mad, and they'll come back to your hotel. Communication's the key. So you can you, have thank you for that plug. Yeah. <laughs> but have you heard today how many times, I was going to say this later, but how many times today she's already used the word contact, communicate, persuade? The, Absolutely. Those are communication terms, mm -hmm. which is why we're here. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's let you continue. Okay, thanks. Um, there are a couple things uh, that are real important for the meeting planner to know about his or her group before they go to the hotel to talk about booking their meeting. And a lot of this, again, needs to be communicated to the sales manager. The month and year of the, of the meeting that is to take place. Let's start with dates. The, what we call the arrival departure pattern. Will a large number of people arrive on Sunday or Monday and leave on Wednesday or Thursday? This is real important to a hotel. The number of sleeping rooms needed per night. A daily agenda of meeting space needs, exhibit needs, and daily food and beverage functions. Again, how many suites are needed. The more the meeting planner knows about the group, the more the hotel is able to respond to the meeting planner and able to come up with a package that will benefit, hopefully, the meeting planner and the, and the attendees. All of this information gives the meeting planner more position in negotiations. If they know that their convention is worth $1.5 million, that is food for thought. That is information that they can bring to the table, that the hotel can turn around and, and know that what, what worth the business has for the future. In turn, the sales manager will ask questions of the meeting planner. Do you have flexibility? If all of your group arrives on Saturday, it, it kind of screws up our weekend packages. Could all the people arrive on Sunday, possibly? Hotels have traditional patterns where they're busiest. For our hotel, it's Sunday to Wednesday. Our typical business traveler arrives at our hotel on Sunday, conducts meetings or business on Monday, Tuesday, maybe half day Wednesday, and departs on Wednesday. Um, number of complimentary rooms or suites that might be needed. We offer a meeting planner or organization one complimentary room for every 50 rooms that are utilized. Any other special concessions? We actually have groups come to us and ask for a complimentary welcome reception for a thousand people off the bat. So, and do they sometimes know. get it? It depends. Everything all depends on when you are looking at the hotel and how flexible you are. A hotel might have recently had a huge cancellation for a meeting uh, that may be a month away. That hotel was planning on getting $1.5 million in revenue and now it's not going to be realized. If you have a piece of business that might return $1 million, it might be worth it to us to offer a reception to get that piece of business. Yes. Keeping in mind also that once you lose revenue for one night, you're never getting it back. I don't care if you run your hotel at 100% for 29 days. If on the 30th day you ran at 60%, that 40% is bye-bye. It is gone. Absolutely. So if you want 1,000 people to drink for free and I've got 40% on occupancy, you call, y'all come on down and drink. <laughs> you bet. However, when you get the bill, don't be surprised if the rate was just a little bit higher on the rooms than mm -hmm. previously advertised while you were drinking. Absolutely. A hotel room is not something that you can save and try and recuperate at a later date. If I don't sell it tonight, it's gone. Yeah. It's gone. Our next step would be, um, as Stephanie mentioned, our site inspection or tour. This is an opportunity for a meeting planner to experience the hotel firsthand. Uh, there are many times when a convention bureau and hotel might offer free airline tickets and hotel and possibly uh, dinner to a meeting planner and their spouse to come down to fly to Houston to look at the Westin to possibly look at other hotels to potentially book their meeting at the hotel. During the site inspection, the meeting planner will walk through the hotel space, 
sleeping rooms, suites in different areas of the city. comes to a little bit of my conclusion, but there are a couple key things when you were talking about pursuing a job in the hospitality industry or within meeting planning. It involves creative selling, and here I'm talking about selling yourself, exactly. You need to, number one, know thy competition. I have to know what the Hyatt or the Sheraton are offering. You, again, need to know what is out there. What other type of people are out there interviewing for that job? What is the competitor offering? What can you offer in return that you, you might be able to bring to the, to the table? Don't be afraid to ask. I always ask my customer about how they feel about what my competitor is offering compared to what I'm offering. You'll get a, the gist of, of what is really going to be their hot button at that point. And just one last thing to remember is that people buy from people that they like and trust, exactly. You need to go that extra mile, whether in your job or going out and looking for a job. Stephanie? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, now that we've heard a little bit from Mary about the sales process and the up-and-coming meeting planning industry, um, let's talk a little bit about communication as the meeting planner to the hotel about the events that you're planning on the food functions. I think as you have all known, and Dr. Hahn has probably stressed, meaning is in the mind of the receiver. One thing that I have learned as at the University of Houston is that I need to effectively communicate with my customers every day. I want to have a successful relationship with them, so I need to come to a common understanding of what it is that they are looking for and want to achieve with their event. Every day I do this. With my customers, I try and understand exactly what they want to achieve with the convention or a wedding reception. Let me show you some examples. Um, I may get a phone call from a client that's looking to book a meeting with a schoolroom for 20 people. So I'm going to, in my mind, put together a schoolroom package that will fit in a room that looks like this. However, depending on their perception and their orientation, they may be thinking of, did you get a picture of that? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. In their mind, they envision a schoolroom setting like this. This is what we call an inverted or V-shaped setup. And just to make things a little bit more complicated, we also have a <laughs> perpendicular type of schoolroom setup. These are things that I need to... Zoom it in. Okay. Let me get it. There we go. <laughs> this is what we call a perpendicular style of schoolroom. Okay, so it's important that as a hotel representative that I clarify exactly are they looking for an inverted perpendicular or standard size schoolroom setup so that the room that I offer them is going to be what they need. And I also clarify and re-clarify to avoid any miscommunications with my customers. I must identify their clients, my clients' goals and needs and we are continually asking our customers what do they want to achieve so that as a hotel we can help them achieve these goals. We identify their implicit needs as well as an explicit need. Sometimes I get a phone call and a person needs a room for 20 people. I have a room for 20 people for a meeting and boom, we're done. Um, however, things aren't as simple in the real world and um, unfortunately conventions and meetings are a package of goals and needs. Once the sales contract has been signed and turned over from the sales manager, it will be given to me. I will be assigned to this group as the convention or catering manager. This is where I will discuss with you, the meeting planner, in further detail the room setups, your general session, breakout sessions, and in particular the type of food functions that will be included with this convention that you're planning. You may not meet with me until two or five years after the contract signed. A lot of these big conventions, the contract goes out um, way in advance so that they get the type of space that they're looking for. So again, that I will follow up and communicate with you and question how your needs are and if anything has changed since the time that the contract was actually signed. Some of the questions that I may ask you are, in your general sessions, are the starting and ending times still the same? Have your audio-visual needs changed? Is your room set up still schoolroom, or are you back to a theater style? And what is the attendance? How are your attendees um, looking for this upcoming convention? 
the exhibits. Are you planning on doing exhibits? This time you weren't when the convention was signed in. Do we need to put together some space for those exhibits? How many breakout rooms do you need? Um, will you need a storage room or a press office during the convention? And my favorite part is the food. <laughs> <laughs> this is the fun part, and this is where we get to plan all the fun and unique menus for your events. Um, and again, I'll ask you questions. How many people are you expecting? Has your, con has your continental breakfast uh, changed to a breakfast buffet? Are you doing an opening reception? Will there be hosted bars versus a cash bar? And will there be theme parties? And on the note of theme parties, as your convention service manager, I can arrange all the props and decorations necessary to do a theme party. This is always something fun for the conventioners. They're away from home. They're seeing people they haven't seen in a while. And this is a nice way for everyone to have a good time. Let me show you some pictures of some parties that we have done at the hotel some different themed parties and events. If you can see this. This is a dinner in our grand ballroom. Um, as you can see, we've probably got about um, 600 people in the ballroom. And um, let me show you the next picture. Yeah, what's the theme? Is that basic? It's, it was a Republican party. A Republican. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bush. Yeah. And here we go. There's uh, George Bush. So as you can see in the background, um, we put together all of the decorations for this particular party. Um, there's another picture here. Now this was a wedding reception that we did. We organized the linens, the flower arrangements, and did all the decorations on the tables. Let me show you some more shots. This is looking down in the ballroom. If you look on the sides there, the, the walls were even decorated. Um, we organized with the decorators to come in um, and put together the theme on this particular event. And here's a close-up shot of the table arrangements. Well, this is where all the fun begins. I get to work with the meeting planners and talk about the menus that they want during their convention or event and I help them select the most appropriate and unique style of menus for each day's events. On the special menus we do want to work with our chef. At the West End we can provide food from around the world. Our chef is experienced in all types of ethnic type foods. He's done dishes from Indian, Chinese, Thai, German, Persian foods. This is important to know um, as a meeting planner that you can do themes based around menus and special parties and this will ensure that your guests have a, a good time. Uh, let me stress again that knowing your group is very important as Mary pointed out. When you know your group you can communicate the needs of your group and you, we can provide you with the quality of food and service that you come to expect. And as a meeting planner what are they expecting from you? What are your meetings been like in the past and how do you want to change those? What meetings during the convention are scheduled? Are things uh, leisurely? Or are they on the go? You know, breakout meeting after breakout meeting? Do you have a general session every day? Um, do you have a, uh, menus on the go? Do you have continental breakfast or do they get breakfast on their own? These are just some of the questions that I will continually ask you and we can work together and plan the different food functions. And again, the communication between myself and you as the meeting planner is very important. Um, we'll need to know the exact time schedules and most importantly, your budget. How much do you want to spend? What is your overall budget? What can we spend um, during the breakfast hour? What can we spend at lunch and dinner? And we can work from there. Um, it is also important to know that we need the menus from the meeting planners at least three weeks in advance. The reason from this is we order from our suppliers and our vendors and in order to sh ensure fresh quality food, we need to get the orders to the vendors as quickly as possible. The what later we wait to get the menus to our chef for him to order, the less choices we have with creative creativity and um, guarantee of freshness is not as, as great. Um, the responsibility as a meeting planner is to provide the information to me and we will work together back and forth on these points. With all of this in mind, we can provide fresh quality food at all of your different food functions. 
As a meeting planner, you will probably get to plan anything from a five-day meeting, including breakfast, lunch, and dinner, to a weekend retreat for just a small group. We will probably do something very different for the five-day meeting as opposed to the weekend retreat. At five days, we're, it's a long span of time. We want to create something different each day for your attendees so they're not bored and they kept, they're kept happy. In any case, the food and the quality that we're going to provide will be at the highest standards that we can at the Westin. And the Catering Convention Services Manager will provide you with tips and information um, on planning these meals. So I want to take you through some specific events that we've done at the hotel and some of the schedules and the food functions that we worked around those schedules. Let me go ahead. Um, put this on the screen for you. In example A, Friday was the day that they had pre-convention meetings, their exhibitors set up, the convention office was set up. Saturday they went into a hospitality area, they had a small deli buffet luncheon and a reception. Sunday was a continuation of those setups. And Monday is when the actual convention got started. We had a breakfast buffet that morning for all the attendees. General staff the session was from 8 to 9. We had a box lunch to go. Now, the reason you may want to do a box lunch is if you have short of time, your attendees have to get from one place to another, we'll put something in a box for them and pick it up and they run with it. I'll show you that some of those menus. And that night, we did a dinner buffet Texas style. We decorated it with a local vendor with hay bales, wagon wheels, Texas flags, old Eric's. We had some really good food. Tuesday, again, they were back into breakfast buffet, a general session in the morning, breakout meetings throughout the day, and a secondary box lunch. I believe this day they had dinner on their own. And then Wednesday, breakfast meetings and breakout meetings throughout the day, general session and a lunch buffet. While you're there, Stephanie, yeah. can you throw in an approximate price? I know that's on negotiated depend well, like on a breakfast buffet, a box lunch. Probably on a breakfast buffet, you're looking anywhere from 14 to $16, depending on what per, per person. person per person. Okay, and a box lunch? A box lunch is, is probably about the same price, um, 16 maybe up to $18 on a box lunch. Continental breakfast is, um, is a little less, probably $7.75 uh, per person. And that's juice, coffee? Juice, coffee, coffee Danish pastries on the go. Let me show you these menus that we put together on the Chinese takeout. So you can see a box lunch doesn't have to be just sandwiches. It can be anything creative as you want. We put together a Chinese noodles, cold sesame chicken, yogurt salad, California rolls, a fortune cookie, and soft drink. So it can be a lot of fun. And we decorate these in um, colored boxes. So the next menu was the, that Texas barbecue that I talked about. We did it the cowboy way. Um, we started out with barbecue, sirloin, and pork ribs, venison, pork chili, Poblano peppers, chicken and beef fajitas. I know it's around lunchtime. <laughs> um, Texas Gulf fried shrimp, hill country sausage, barbecue beans, and the works. So, and a lot of these conventioners don't get to eat this type of food. So when they're in Texas, we do event occasionally do this type of event. Put the antacid at, <laughs> <laughs> antacid at the bottom of the page for those northerners that are not used to this nice hot stuff. Really? New home viewers just raided the refrigerator, right? <laughs> I know, you're all hungry at this point. Houses are running for the couch. <laughs> um, example B was a group that came in. It was a very short-term booking for us. It was a three-day meeting. They had extensive meals with us. And they had a limitless budget, so we had a lot to work with with them. Uh, Sunday was their setup, as Dr. Hunt has talked about. A lot of groups set up on Saturdays and Sundays. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are for their general meetings. There was a welcome breakfast on the early morning of Monday, general sessions from 9 to 10 that day, breakouts. And this particular group we did a cater out for. We don't always do functions at the hotel in our property. We sometimes take a hotel on the road. We went to the Museum of Fine Arts and put together a nice menu and a, and a a beautiful venue for their dinner and their attendees were thrilled. We bust them all over. Everyone enjoyed themselves and then we bust them back. Um, Tuesday again, real quickly to go through their schedule, was breakfast, breakouts, lunch buffet. Um, Wednesday was their last night with us and we did a, another theme type of dinner. So I will show you those menus again. 
This was the cater out that we did at the Museum of Fine Arts. The reception we did with smoked salmon, rosettes, asparagus wrapped in prosciutto, artichoke bottoms. The, the dinner was uh, Thai shrimp chilled on marinated soba noodles, champagne sorbet, black Angus <laughs> filet. I know this is probably driving y'all crazy. And um, <laughs> the dessert was towers of chocolate filled with dark white and milk chocolate mousse <laughs> with a raspberry coolie. Similar to the cafeteria. Uh, this is what we eat every day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And they all just changed their majors up. <laughs> That's We'd right. This was a dinner around the world. Um, we had Mexico, Germany, and representative, Italy, and China. And you can see some of the different types of menus that we prepared for them. Um, another group that we had came in and they had a carnival as part of their festivities. And yes, we put together a carnival area in the hotel. Um, this particular group came in on a Wednesday and they stayed throughout the week and all of their activities were Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It happened to fall on a holiday, Labor Day. Um, and as you can see, I won't go through all of them, the official opening of the convention was Friday and we had the carnival dinner that night with the magic show, palm readers, and we even had a fast pitch booth, but make sure you're not trying this at home. And mm -hmm. Sunday night was their last night where they had awards and dinner and dancing the night away. So let me show you some quick menus of what we've done there. And all the carnival food that you can imagine. Frito pies, nachos, pretzels, hot dogs, hot dogs, ice cream, and cotton candy. And um, this was their final day with us, and we put together a nice awards dinner menu for them. Salads with prosciutto, olives, feta cheese, artichoke hearts. They had New York strip steak, uh, fresh vegetables, rosemary, roasted potatoes, and again, a, a chocolate dessert. And I think all desserts should be chocolate <laughs> if you're planning a menu. So, um, and this is one area that I work with a lot as a catering manager. You may be planning, um, get married someday and this does involve <laughs> a lot of the same things a meeting planner goes through in planning convention as a catering representative I'm going to ask you some of the same questions I did as a meeting planner what is your budget what is your time schedule what do you envision for your type of reception and as a bride or a groom you'll become a meeting planner you'll get involved in a lot of things that you never thought you would and spend a lot of money in one day and <laughs> it'll be a lot of fun um, but this again too has a schedule of events so let's put together up here not as detailed as a convention but again on Friday night we did the rehearsal dinner Saturday we do a bridesmaids luncheon and um, they're off to the church uh, reception and dinner and then Sunday a lot of times there's out-of-town guests that are with us at the hotel they wanted to provide a brunch for them and this is the last of our menus <laughs> this is the bridesmaids luncheon it's it's very simple she was nervous so we put together just very light menus for her and all of her bridesmaids and then again the dinner for that night it was a salad with olives Roma tomatoes prosciutto we had a cassis sorbet marinated french breast of chicken uh, polenta diamond baby vegetables and chocolate tulip they may need to know what a sorbet is a sorbet is is very light it's um, made with fruit and ice and it's not creamy like you would think of ice cream or um, and it's not yogurt it's and to it's to cleanse the palate it's a, oh it's to cleanse exactly it's to cleanse the palate between each course um, I've got a question. Uh, I went to uh, uh, Magwood several years ago and um, they served, uh, it was, the main course was like fish and, and a bunch of my friends, we didn't eat fish and we, right. we pointed that out to it and just like that they brought out, you know, chicken or whatever. Right. Right. How much, you say you, you make uh, about 5% more, but how much of a different menu do you usually make or is that normally a consideration? It is a consideration when you're talking about something like fish or people nowadays are vegetarians. Um, it's something that's if you have requested it on the spot it will take a little while it's not like a restaurant and they just go back but it, we can provide it we always have something in the kitchen if it's not fish it will be some kind of chicken or a vegetarian type of menu to bring out because we do have a lot of requests these days um, for different type of meals if we have it we'll provide it 
But it would help if the meeting planner told right. you that on, when they register, check here if you need vegetarian menus. And we do have so that. We I've put together menus where it's for 300 people, and I know I need 30 vegetarian meals. Those people are to identify themselves to the server when they come by that the, I am the vegetarian person. Um, I'm non-fish or, or whatever, but that's something to take in consideration as a meeting planner. You know, fish is, is very risky so um, for large groups of people. Now, there's something else I know that you sometimes do they might enjoy hearing about, and that involves the ice rink. We have on occasion with the International Festival and different groups, if we cannot host a group in our ballroom, as I told you, it seats 900 to 1,000. Occasionally, we have groups that want to be at our hotel and sample our food, and there are over 1,000. The ice rink allows us the flexibility of putting at least 2,000 people out on the ice for dinner. We work with the gallery of management. And How they, cold is it? Well, it's not <laughs> that cold. What they, they put two Sorry. layers down. They put, they put boards, a rubber mat, and a carpet on top. So um, we've put dance floors and had um, bands and DJs out there on the dance floor. We've hosted about 2,000 for lunch with Lacombe, mm -hmm. 2,000, and, and 2,000 for dinner time. The gallery people, as well as the hotel, have a lot to gain for them. This is a lot of publicity um, for the people that are walking by. The Westin gets their name out there, and it's a different venue and a different way to have a, a dinner or lunch. Andrew, but did I notice that the jogging track is around the top of the Galleria? Right, is, is that's that connected that? to the University Club, mm -hmm. and our swimming pool is next to the University Club. We have a relationship with them um, for your attendees. If they want to go and work out or jog around the track or swim, they can uh, get a pass to the University Club area. Okay. Anything else? Okay, here's. I was kind of curious on budgets. Um, I'm sure our instructor has told you that we have a project that's coming up and we have to basically become the convention organizer and the meeting manager, if you would. Mm -hmm. Can you give us an idea about a breakdown of how much, uh, like in percentages, how much should we as uh, associate for food or should put aside for food, how much for video and for props, how much for rooms, for miscellaneous? Can you give us kind of a breakdown of a group of around maybe 500 people? It all depends. It, it's all Good like answer. It really is. You know, people will call up and say, how much is a wedding? Well, yeah. how many people? It's like, and how much is a car? Do you want a, a Chevy or a Rolls Name Royce? There are a lot. Can I turn it around the other way to tell you things that factor into pricing as far as rooms? That's what they really need. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Any yeah. help you can give us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when, I think I went into it a little bit before, but... A meeting that might be booked in the month of August in Houston is much cheaper than October. Why? It's hot in August. We don't get that much many visitors. It's low demand. Um, a meeting that uses a lot of sleeping rooms, volume, you know, the more you buy, the better deal that you get. The number of food and beverage functions that the group has. If the group is using all of my sleeping rooms and all of my meeting space, but they are not holding any food and beverage events for the, at the hotel, it still might not be considered as great of a piece of business to me as a group that would have food and beverage. We want to profit in every area of the hotel that we can. Um, I just want to give you some ballpark figures. Um, as I said before, Continental Breakfast probably ranges anywhere from 7 to $8. Um, a breakfast buffet will run you 14 to 16 dollars. Lunch prices start from 16 to 18 dollars, and I'm speaking per person. And dinner starts around 22 dollars per person. Mm -hmm. uh, some of these theme parties, they're, you're probably looking at 30 dollars per person. And um, question: mm -hmm. sure. it, There's no meeting room charge if, when there's a meal function. That is, that is correct. When you're doing room? your food and beverage in the meeting room itself, then the room rentals waive. If you're just strictly doing a meeting, um, there'll be a room room. rental attached to that. Which may run what? Um, $150 to $600, depending on smaller breakouts. Mm -hmm. General sessions will be a little bit more than that. Mm -hmm. But it, and as you said, it's a package. It's the number of rooms, the amount of space that you're going to be booking, the amount of food and beverage that you'll be booking, and everything will factor in. And um, the, the nicer the picture, the better, the better the deal that you'll get from the hotel side. 
if the group is using all of our meeting space, then obviously, and maybe the group is, we have four, we can give a group 400 rooms at the Westin Galleria. If a group uses 100 rooms, but they need all of my space, I have 300 more plus more rooms to sell and no space to put it. So it all has to kind of equal out. The hotel, it's, it may sound like the hotel's being like, well, it has to benefit me, but for us to make the most profit and to give you a better deal, it has to work for us, really, ultimately. I hate to sound like that, but it's really Well, we've, t we've talked about organizational communication in here mm -hmm. and how the long-range goal is survival, right. whether you're a hospital or a mm -hmm. hotel or a small business. Mm -hmm. And if, if poor planning on your part caused costs to skyrocket for another group because you left your hotel half empty, mm -hmm. You know, it all works together, sure. and so it has to remember that characteristic of system balance and interdependence. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Did you have a question? Yeah, I was just going to ask back to the the uh, skating rink. Uh, <laughs> did you say that was in a you, you put up a tent, or did I imagine that? No, there wasn't a tent. Um, they did put up. They roped off an area for us to come down, but they do put up um, screens around. Uh, certain areas of the ice rink just to keep people from, you know, coming in and looking on the rink level. And then everybody up on the top can look down and watch everything. But there's a, a three-layer covering okay. over the over ice. Over the ice. So that we can set the table so people can walk in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You had a question? You. Um, what other experience have you had in the past with uh, catering and stuff, prior experience? Because you sound real right. knowledgeable and excited about the food right. and everything. Um, well, when I was at the she University likes of Houston, to eat. <laughs> I love food. Uh, at the uh, when I was at the University of Houston, I went to school part time and I worked part time. I worked part time for an accounting firm, and I started out as Girl Friday slash meeting planner slash public relations director, and I worked on an annual event for this accounting firm, an annual dinner, and I got to work hands on with the catering manager, and I liked what they did, and we did tastings. A lot of times, when you have groups of three hundred or more. You get to taste the food prior to the event so that you know exactly what you're going to be having and then we give you an opportunity to look at, at chicken versus beef and we'll give you two, two or three choices. So I attended a lot of these types of events um, three, three years prior to coming to the hotel and began working on their annual dinner and got into the hotel business as a catering assistant and work started to begin uh, working knowledge of food and meal planning with the hotel. We don't call them secretaries anymore, it's an <laughs> assistant. But that's, that's exactly how I started out too. It, with a college degree and, and I thought it would, I would be mortified getting a secretarial position, but I did just that at a conference center up in Conroe as an, a, a receptionist sales assistant in the, res, in the convention sales department. You learn such, you, you gain such knowledge by answering the phone and trying to help people out. If the sales manager is not there, at least you can get the information and try and help them out. So it's, it's um, it, the market out there is very difficult right now, but there are opportunities and probably 90% of the people in our marketing department have started out in other low areas. and not where they wanted to. It, you hate to hear that, but you have to do that to, to get to the position because you can't possibly, I can't possibly sell the hotel until I've worked in divisions and departments in the hotel. I can't, I can't sell a computer until I know how it works. Yeah. You're talking about that um, because like you said, the front desk agent and mm -hmm. stuff like that, entry level, what all do they look for for that? Because that's what I'm trying to do right now mm -hmm. and I don't know exactly what they're looking for and I would like to know what I need to do so I can get people, a job. People's think about, skills. Think about when you check into a hotel, what you look for. What, people, think about when you go to a front desk. Courtesy. Yeah. People skills. People skills. Smiling face. Yeah. Initiative. Clean and neat. Yeah. Yeah. Someone who's helpful. Maybe you pulled up to the hotel and, and they lost your luggage and you're at the desk. What do you want the person on the other end to say, I am sorry, Ms. Jones, you know what? Do you you need some toothpaste and a toothbrush. Why don't I get that sent up to your room? Someone who's going to, it is basic people skills. When people stay in a hotel, they're away from home. They're sleeping in a strange bed, staying in a strange city. 
So anything to make them feel comfortable. So at an interview, well, they say like experience. And I'm like, I don't know how. I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. At an entry level, I don't think at an entry level position they're looking for a whole lot of experience. But you, again, you do have to sell yourself. Um, I didn't have any hotel experience when I went in, and I had a little bit of experience prior to the hotel industry. And I went in as a position that I might not normally want to take, but then I proved myself at that at that level. Um, one thing to keep in mind too is computer skills are a plus. I know everyone is computer literate, but the hotel is going more and more online with computers. Uh, you check in, it's a computer. You look at function space, it's on a computer. We do contracts on computers. So mm -hmm. um, the more knowledge that you have of computers is a plus. Um, and the more personable that you can be at your interviews, uh, people skills, communication, and they will take a serious look at you. And there are a lot of people that are still at the University of Houston that are, work at our front desk. Mm -hmm and they work around your schedules. But you're a people person. I know you well enough to know that. And if you can go in with that smile that we can't get on camera right now. You bet. Turn around. And they oh, do work with yeah. your schedules. There's a lot of people that work the mm -hmm. night shift. There's people that work from 6 a.m. To, to 3. And mm -hmm. then they go to class after 3. So it works out for them. Mm -hmm. You bet. Are but there any other fiasco? I don't know. We've only got a couple of minutes. But without naming chains other than earthquakes, what kind of problems oh, I sometimes think occur? Probably my favorite story. There was a um, complete blackout of the Galleria Mall a couple years ago, and uh, all of the electricity in the whole city block went out. And we had a group of probably 800, 900 people in the Galleria bar ballroom foyer, and we had a lot of little Weston mini flashlights that, that we, we were gave to customers. Around with. <laughs> so we handed them out. We were so prepared. <laughs> we had people stationed in stairwells, show. knocking on doors, checking with on people with the little flashlights. So. Okay, well, we thank you, uh, Mary and Stephanie from the Weston Galleria, for uh, being our guest today on the meeting management class. Uh, we know it took time and effort just to get yourselves over <laughs> here to the central campus. So we thank you, and we'll continue next time. Thanks. And have some treats before you leave. Thank you.